Stoughton for EMS Now. I'm here at Apex 2013 in California and I'm joined by Pam Gordon who is President, CEO and Founder of Technology Forecasters. Phil, great to be back. Good to see you. Thank More you. importantly, you are hosting um, yesterday the, the VIP event. And it was fascinating to read about it. How did it go? What was going on there? It was even more fun to be there. You know, you always take a risk when you ask a bunch of executives to talk about the next 10 mm. to 20 years of the industry. But here at the IPC Apex Expo, they rose to the occasion. They stepped up. They did. Yeah, and you've, you've done a couple of these think tanks elsewhere. You did one in California. I think you did one in Israel recently. Exactly, Phil, right. The, the first executive think tank on supply chain we hosted was in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. Most people would say the tech center of the United mm. States, yes. Yeah. The next one was in Israel, which I think most people would say Tel Aviv is the tech center of the Middle mm. East. So it was wonderful to give the executives yesterday here at the Apex Expo a taste of what yeah. that's like. Instead of tackling five entrenched supply chain issues, we tackled one of their okay. choosing. Okay, and what did they choose? I gave them a choice of three, okay. and what they chose was disaster preparedness and recovery. Okay, so risk mitigation, how they manage that whole process. Exactly. I guess pretty pertinent with Fukushima and Thai floods and all those issues and all those, Absolutely. All those challenges. And is that one of the, was that one of the topics that was tackled in um, Silicon Valley and in Tel Aviv? No, good question. I purposely gave them a choice of three that we hadn't yet tackled. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the response was surprising. I mean, you'd expect them tactically to say, well, you find a, another company, competitor or not, who mm. could take over some of your manufacturing if necessary. They went so far beyond that, Phil. Mm. All the way to talking about, on a global scale, balancing of supply chain requirements all the way from design through manufacturing, logistics, and mm. end of life. Yeah, I think uh, what we're what we're hearing from exhibitors is there's there's a bit more common sense coming back into their their view on what the what the global climate what the their global footprint should look like. We're we're behaving a little bit less like lemmings. We're being less driven just by trend, perhaps now. Do you see that in in people you're talking to? Absolutely. You know, it's so common to just keep driving in the direction they've always been driving or where they think their investors or competitors are going. But to actually have an hour and a half to be forced to think about, maybe that's not the direction to go to in the long run. And maybe we need to enlarge our vision to see how we can work as a cooperative industry mm. to prepare for, in this case, disaster or some other kind of supply yeah. chain interruption. Yeah, and one of, one of the elements that we've talked about for, for some time is, is how all of that impacts on, on the environment, for example. Are you seeing with those kind of high-level executives a greater awareness of, of, of what's going on environmentally on, with their supply chain than there has been in the past? Uh, yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right about the linkage. I mean, first of all, why are there so many disasters mm. now that are affecting the supply chain? And many would say it's some of the changing climate yeah. around the globe. But from that to look at what the solution is, yes, some of the executives are at a high enough level strategically mm. to understand that the materials that we've been using in our electronics for decades are not in forever supply. Yeah. And before they run out completely, what will happen? Mm. The price goes up, yeah. shortages, conflict, etc. Mm. So that's why design for environment, if it yeah. were DFE, yeah. is on their minds as well. Yeah, and you have a program that you've developed recently that, that we've seen some video on, which that's really good, on, on for, those kind of, for those kind of concepts. How does, how does that work and how do, how do people tap into that resource? Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah, so since 2006, electronics companies have been bringing us in to train their engineers and supply chain folks in DFE, Design for Environment, that looks at how can you, from the concept stage of a product, use the fewest amount of materials, mm. the most efficient processes, energy efficiency, even efficient supply chain logistics and use and end mm. of life. So we've brought it virtual now. Right. So it's now online, available for anyone around the world. Okay, and they can just access that through the Tech Forecasters through your website? Yes, absolutely. DFE okay. Online okay. is the virtual training program. And they then, they then buy a license and they have access to it within the company? Precisely, and they get certified. So oh, okay. then they are actually certified in DFE, which is good for their companies as mm -hmm. we move into the future. How do we comply with regulations more efficiently, yeah. not only today, but we know there's more coming, yeah. yes? 
and it's good for them career-wise as yeah. well. Yeah. And do you see that connecting in kind of both directions in the supply chain? Is it EMS people that are predominantly looking at that or is it the OEMs as well? What about their suppliers? What I'm about? so happy that it's both. Okay. We tend to look at the electronics industry in three equal parts. You have the OEM, mm -hmm. who is absolutely driving the concept stage, and yeah. yes, we have some good companies in that regard. You have the EMS companies who are putting the products together yeah. in the most efficient way they can, but they don't always have full control over the design. Mm -hmm. And then you have the component suppliers, the PC fab, all of the suppliers who are looking to use responsible, economical, yeah. and reliable materials. Yeah, and they all have, they all have a big impact on that. Yes. On, on that process, and in terms of brand value, if you like, in mm -hmm. that, are you seeing OEMs actually saying to their EMS guys, you need to be on board with the whole design for environment, the whole sustainability thing, because. This is, this is something we're going to be looking at as a criteria for our purchasing? Absolutely. We, we had a wonderful quote from one of our clients at Applied Materials mm -hmm. up in Silicon Valley who says, as an open letter to his EMS companies, he says, we know a lot about design for responsibility, design mm. for environment. EMSs, we want you to know more than we do. Okay. Okay. That's the challenge for them, isn't it? And it that's is. that's what they're going to have to shape up. I'm sure, like me, you would have really enjoyed um, moderating. It was oh, of course. A lot of fun. Yes, it was absolutely fun. fun. And, and I guess you've learned things that you're going to take to the next Think Tank event. When, when do you think that's going to be? We're looking at Mexico, actually. Okay. We're looking at Monterrey as a yep. possibility. And every Think Tank has its own culture. Yeah. But so far, three out of three, yep. these executives are willing to be true well, leaders. That's it. And you kind of take them out of their comfort zone, let them, let them really explore stuff. and. They rise to it. They you know. do, and the competition spirit yeah. is alive and doing well for them. It's good to see you. Pam, thanks very much for telling My me pleasure. all about it. My pleasure. Thanks for coming nice in today, to be and I hope here. we'll talk again soon. Thank you. Thanks so much.